Hello everybody, this is Wilhelm at LR Workshop. Welcome to an another video about the most British vehicle ever to come out of Germany and Austria. Oh, a lot's changed since the last video. Uh, bye bye Wales, then I've got to build it in France. There you go, that's the, uh, the way the world is these days. Anyway, this is a very hastily put together video. I'm just going to throw out some clips here because the, the, the new Grenadier video for the engine and transmission has come out. It's not available on YouTube yet, and I think on Instagram they've got a countdown till Friday. But for those of you who put your email address in on the website, it's uh, they've sent it round, and it should be in your inbox if you've done that. Well, probably what they want people to do is for people like me to come and make videos about them, and everyone else gets noticed, and then they go and sign up to get early access. And it's what known as what's known as uh, first party marketing. They basically get your uh, details and uh, bypassing GDPR rules, that kind of stuff. There we go. Anyway, so I'm just going to run through some photos here and give my reaction. If you haven't watched this video, the link is above in the description, what have you. Go and have a look. There are spoilers. But this is, as I say, this is very hastily put together because um, I don't have much time. But I thought I'd get a video out just because my last Grenadier video seemed to have got them more views than all of their ambassadors combined. I have contacted them, but I heard nothing. So maybe I'm not the sort of person that... Uh, they want to rub shoulders with. There we go. We shall see what the future holds. Right. Just a screenshot of the side of the engine here. I guess the thing I want to pick out from this is that's a lot of plastic. That is a lot of plastic. Um, there we go. How durable that's going to be. Who knows? In the heat and the dust it is on, out of UV under the bonnet. But there we go. But what's interesting here, oil filter. You can get it from the top. That was one of my wishes. But it looks like it's not going to be a spin-on. It's going to be a cartridge style. There we go. Uh, we'll see how that goes down. Oil cooler down here. So obviously it's going to be quite well packaged in together. Um, from this side we can see we've got a turbo on here. And that's quite slung under the engine a bit. It's quite a beastly thing. Now this casting, this is a very modern style of casting. They basically remove as much material as possible um to make it as durable in the right places but as, as lightweight as possible so i don't actually know if that's aluminium or if that's going to be steel but essentially this is a bmw six cylinder engine it is the bmw now it's quite a divisive subject actually a lot of people in comments say oh my god it's gonna have the bmw engine they're so unreliable and other people are like oh yes it's the best bmw engine they've ever made so there are some bmw engines that are quite unreliable recently uh, but I think this isn't one of them. I think these ones are generally more reliable and they've got quite a good reputation. I think they're in the M, the M, M whatever, I don't even know, BMW. It's really, they're in one of the latest BMWs, I think. Uh, petrol and diesel, straight six. So what's interesting here is that Land Rover went for smaller engines originally in the Defender and stuck a turbo on them. So you've got a slightly smaller engine that's a bit more stressed. Uh, 70 series Land Cruisers went for a bigger engine, six series, um, six cylinder in the 70 series, 1HZ for example, didn't necessarily put a turbocharger on it in its kind of like most stock form, lowest spec. So you've got a very reliable engine. Um, the ones I saw in Malawi, they did 300,000 kilometers, 200,000 miles, most of them were on that, and they, they were not leaking oil from anywhere. It was utterly unreal. So it's interesting here they put a turbocharger on a straight six. So they're kind of going for hopefully understressed and also a bit of performance there when you when you put your foot down the uh what's under the bonnet yeah so it's quite crazy so i think what they said in the last video is they've taken off or one of the videos in between they've taken off the engine cover because they could get it to fit in the bonnet under the bonnet height and uh, who needs it anyway but you can see it's quite a busy it's quite a busy engine bay although i think i still think there's access there because the, the wings are probably defender height access um so there's still a bit of a bit of room of that. You can see you can see this is a, totally a prototype. They've got the air inlet just sticking out the front here, and then they've cut a hole in the wing for the coolant bottle. I assume they're going to design those at a, a later stage, which is why they've gone for this. God knows what that is. So I assume that's underbody under under bonnet temperatures sensor there. So what's interesting here is you know one of my requests was please can I go around with the same fastener around the entire engine bay. What we've got here is a mix of, these are just normal torques, these are like external torques, star, I don't know exactly what they're called, which is a bit of a shame, so I'm going to have to buy a new set of sockets for that. Um, 
and then we've got more talk talks there, but they look a bit like security talks. So another fastener yet again. Oh, and there's our humble little hex head bolt nestling away in the 19th century. Thank you for putting that in. Um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so quite a busy engine up the top here. Um, still quite a lot of plastic. It's very modern. It's one of the reasons you can tell modern engines. It's a characteristic of them. There's so much plastic. But then plastics have come a long way and so so many things are made from plastics these days. I mean, most of the new Defender is plastic. To be honest, it's lightweight, strong, and and uh, you can charge a shitload because in a minor prang, it all gets trashed, especially if it's bodywork. Um, so probably what happens here is it probably looks quite cramped at the moment, but a lot of this sort of elf air filtery stuff on the side, you will, you'll remove that probably quite quickly and then you'll get a whole lot of access. So that's probably how this is going to work. Um, I'm not, I don't really have any engine expertise, so I can't really speak about what all these bells and whistles are doing, but no doubt they are sensors for things. Uh, yeah, whether it's going to run unplugged or not, that was one of my wishes, but it probably won't. But at least we've got Mr. Oosterike and his guns on the job. Look at those babies. We know we're in good hands. So just a bit of a sneak peek inside. I don't think we can actually tell anything from this screenshot because this is a prototype vehicle. So they've probably just made this out of sheet metal as quick as they can. It's got a roll cage in there and then the entire computer system from Apollo 13 as well. But I think the, the body panels are just cheaply, quickly put together in a general form. I don't think they're going to actually production ones but it may be interesting that they've got the wheel arch doesn't go full height um it will just be curved around the window they're more like a high cap defender and the dashboard i'm sure a lot of uh, defender fans will probably want this is the final dashboard but i can imagine as well this is just a prototype what was interesting about seeing some of this footage off-roading is that actually you can see with the wheel being further back, so the, the, the departure angle being quite good because the wheels are put further back, I can imagine it being a lot better ride than a Defender. Um, there is a thing in a Defender, if you've ever sat in the back of a Defender right at the back, near the back door, and you're going over bumps, it's not a pleasant experience. You get catapulted quite a lot. And as well, if you've been going over bumps and you hit a bump or a speed bump or something just a bit, uh, a bit too quickly, Things will get catapulted whether they're in the back or not, and that's basically from you know everything behind the rear wheel. You know, the moment of the articulation is a lot greater than if you're in between the wheels. With this setup, I imagine everything is more or less most of the load will be between the axles. So um it looks quite a stable vehicle from I mean obviously what you what you lose is articulation with a more stable vehicle, but as I've said before, I'm not particularly that interested in articulation. Then we had this guy, Mr. Smug, who told us, no, you cannot have a manual gearbox. We are making it automatic because that's the best thing for the job. He did say as well that you can lock in um, gears, specific gears, if you want, don't want it to change out. Because it's an eight-speed, I imagine it'd probably be like one, one, two, three, four. You could lock in there, but it's not going to be, you know, a manual shifting gear lever. It's going to be probably paddles or something like that or a something but the, the, this is quite interesting there's a few digs here he went on to uh to talk about you know how we're not going to have belt you know knobs and things that settings and electronics we're just going to have two levers you know and it's obviously a thumbs up uh, thumbs up fingers up two fingers up to land rover and their terrain response which is quite appealing actually but anyway for all those of you who wanted a manual gearbox swallow that Although what is clear from the back of this gearbox is that they have totally shafted the Grenadier. I mean, look at that. Uh, insert euphemism here, but uh, that's pretty meaty, which is can't be a bad thing. And one other thing is they are designing the transfer box from scratch, which I guess you probably have to if BMW don't make any proper four-wheel drives. They're going to have to do that. Uh, or Magnus Thayer don't use, you know, build stuff. If they build stuff for Unimogs or whatever, then they might not have anything small enough. So it's quite interesting here. They've got the selectors up on uh, the input and the output. They've both got selectors on there. Um, the gears look pretty meaty, although it's interesting they've got this. It's kind of splits halfway down the middle, which I hope it's not going to be like the 70 series Land Cruiser, where basically you have to, to get to the bolts that hold onto the gearbox. I think this is the other way around, but imagine it was this was the gearbox you have to take this cover off dismantle all the gears expose all the gears under the vehicle into the dusty environment just to get to those bolts to take the tra transfer box off 
um, which I don't think is a great thing. Plus, you've then got to rebuild it back on the vehicle. It's just a fiddly place to be rebuilding gears and putting bearings in and that kind of stuff and getting preload. I'd rather take the whole unit off the bench, uh, off the vehicle, put it on the bench, fix it on the bench, put it back on. Or you've got another one ready to go. You take it off, put another one on. You can do that in a couple of hours as opposed to having to take it off and then f rebuild it on the vehicle when the vehicle's got more downtime because of that. So I hope they don't do that. But it's kind of akin to, it looks a bit like a 70 series cruiser at this stage, but there we go. But it certainly looks very meaty. There we go. That was a quick rattle through of the Grenadier. Obviously things are changing all the time. And uh, I'd love to know your comments below, actually, and your thoughts, what you think about this latest incarnation, the latest reveal. Obviously, I'm not going to talk any more about any other bits of the people always love talking about the, the low, the lower link arms and things like that. But I'm just going to I've just been focusing on the engine and transmission. So anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.